Hello. Welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Number 68, I think. So I've already got one person's just uh, commented that they'd like to be bored to sleep. So you've come to the right place because that's exactly what I'm going to do. What I need to do before I go any further, J886 says I need to be bored to sleep. So yeah, thank you for joining. Uh, maybe you can like the video if you like it. Uh, and also subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. That's kind of a message to anyone that's joined. That's maybe listening to this or watching this video another time, you know, a different time of the day or night. So what I'm just going to do is I need to share this onto Facebook because then I'll get, it's just letting people know because I've got a thing where I try and, I do live broadcast on Facebook, which is I did what I did last night. And I do live broadcast on YouTube. So I try to um, intertwingle. Intertwingle, is that a right word? Um, so it's, uh, you know, trying to sort of cater for everybody, but it's not always very easy to do that. Oh, that's not working. So I'll come out of there. Oh. So I'm just going to try and log in quickly. Shouldn't take more than a couple of seconds. And I'm doing it in the wrong place because I'm not logged in. Ah. That's strange. I must have managed to log myself out of every single place. Hopefully not Facebook though. Okay. So let's have a quick look. Log into Facebook. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to come out of there. I'm going to open up a different screen. That's a weird noise. That's a, unfortunately, this, this laptop's a bit noisy, so, but hopefully if I do this quickly, then I can just shut the laptop down. So there we go. So only watch this or listen to this when you can safely close your eyes because this boring sleep session may cause sleepiness. So, yep. Where are we going? You know when you want something just to, like with the internet, you want it just to get on with it and it's, it's taking forever and ever and ever. Right, so if I just stick that on mute as well so that I don't disturb. So if I share this, so I've got two people watching at the moment. So that's not a lot of people, but it's still, still nice. And oh, how strange. Right, I just need to photo copy, photocopy, <laughs> copy. So hello to those, please 
like it if you like what I'm doing generally in life and uh, so I'm sharing this to Facebook there's a picture of me on the video like the what do you call it the the thumb thumb print or whatever it's me without my glasses on going like that for some reason the thing is this is probably the least boring part of the whole thing because when I start telling you about my life you will drift off into a deep deep sleep And I think the worst case scenario is you just feel more relaxed, which is can only be a good thing, really. Unless, of course, you're in a wrestling match in the middle of a ring. You don't want to be that relaxed. You probably want to have a bit of energy and stuff, but I'm guessing you wouldn't be fighting for a world title if you're listening to me at this particular moment. So I'm now going to share it to uh, connect.ok.ru There you go, that's connected. And have I posted it to LinkedIn? I don't remember doing that. Yeah, I did. Now I'm going to post it to vk.com. Now I'm going to post it to Tumblr. Tumblr, 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 Tumblr. Right, it won't let me post it because there's no picture, okay? Reddit, I struggle with Reddit, it doesn't, I struggle how to post stuff on there. So I'm going to post it to Google+. Plus. Now I'm going to post it to Twitter. Twitter. So that's done. And that's it. There's nowhere else to post it. I kind of limit it to the ones that YouTube automatically have under their share banner. I could send it by email. I suppose I could, on Facebook, I could, perhaps I need to get, this is an idea, need to get a collection of, uh, people that want to watch my live stuff when I'm live. I don't know how to do it though. It's uh, how to, because there used to be a way on YouTube where you could send messages and do stuff like that. There may still be, but you know, it's been a while since I uh, did anything like that. So J, I've got J's 886, I need to be bored to sleep. So I will try to cater to your need to be bored to sleep request. And, uh, ah, just looking at some of the things that I was reading. looking at some of the stuff that I've been watching on YouTube. All right, I'm gonna close that down. You can listen to it, reducing sound, my magic. I'll take the sound away now. That's good, isn't it? 
I'll move that out the way there. So I'm basically sitting here, I've got my little vapor and my can of Coke. It's kind of like a little visual for those that can't see me. Because if you're listening to this on my podcast, you know, if you listen to SoundCloud or iTunes or Spreaker or iHeartRadio or Spotify, then you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing. But if you're watching on YouTube or if you're watching on Facebook or any of the other places that I've posted the video, so that's it. So, got a couple of questions, but I'm, um, Jay, I said, what do I vape? It's just um, tobacco flavored because I'm using this as a tool to um, to not smoke. So, I smoked for seven. I stopped smoking for seventeen years. Then I started last year. And now I've stopped for four weeks and it's been an easier way to stop rather than just, I didn't really want to chew the gum. Last time I stopped, I used nicotine patches and also some you know, self-hypnosis. But this time... I'm just taking, I'm just being a little bit, I'm using, if it's a cheap way to do it, I don't know, but I'm okay with it. So I'm just, it's, uh, the idea is just to lower the level of nicotine over time. So every time I get another refill, I'll lower the level and to the point where I don't really need it anymore. It's just, uh, is quite habitual, it's more of a habit now than anything else. Let me give you a little sound of me vaping, because this isn't something that I would normally do, I wouldn't. It's a strange thing though, when I was counselling, I remember I had this client, we don't really call them patients in, in England, it's uh, outside of maybe the NHS setting. A hospital setting or doctor setting. So I had this client and he was there for whatever reason. Um, I, I knew at the time I was listening to him, just I just can't go into people's personal stuff. And he pulled out this vape, but it was, it was a big old thing. And he just started, he filled the room with this smoke from the vape and no one had ever done that before. And I was a bit, um, I think it annoyed me a bit. It just, because I kind of connected vaping with smoking. It's like people do it as the same, but it's very, just very, I could hardly see him through the, through the, well, it's not smoke, is it? But through the, um, missed. So in the end, I had to phone him to continue the conversation. But then he pointed out that even though we can't see each other, we can still hear each other because we're only five foot away. And I said, oh yeah, ha. Uh, perhaps we should talk on uh, camera then. And he said, this is silly. You're just making this up so you can talk about this in a silly story one day on camera when you're making some kind of a sleep thing, aren't you? I said, yeah, yeah, it's true. So he said, why don't you just use real stories, real things that happen? I said, well, it's the 68th session. I didn't know I was gonna be doing so many of these. So how was I to know that eventually I was gonna run out of real life events? I was gonna have to start making stuff up. And he said, well, isn't that kind of a bit rude to be making stuff up, isn't it? 
you know, what, what, just, I don't know, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. And I said, you know what doesn't make sense to me? He said, what's that? He said, I can't believe you just got that vape out and filled this entire room with the smell of strawberry and pineapple mixed together. He said, why would that bother you? I said, not, not that it's bothered me, but it doesn't make sense to me. It's, uh, it's an intrusion upon my senses. What do you mean an intrusion upon your senses? I said, look, I, when I came and sat down in this room, waiting for you to arrive, at no point did I think, you know what is missing from this atmosphere in this room? It's the stink of strawberries and pineapple mixed together. And he said, oh, I know what you mean. And uh, he said, uh, oh, well. I said, what do you mean, oh, well? He said, well, not really much we can do, is there? I said, well, what do you mean? And he said, well, it's a made-up story, isn't it? Well, I suppose. And he said to me, you can really put any outcome you want on this. Because if you're making it up, you can add a car, a car chase or or an ice cream, add an ice cream into it. I said, how, how would I add an ice cream into a story, a counselling story? He said, well, you added a vape into it, someone smoking a vape. I said, that's not really technically smoking, is it? It's a, a, a sucking kind of thing more than a smoking thing. He said, yeah, but... Um, I wonder if people can watch it on YouTube without going to, without actually going to the Facebook page. I'm going to go and have a quick look. I can't say quick without whistling quick, quick look. So this is the quiet laptop. Oh, no, 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 that's not right. Okay, bear with me two seconds. I'm going to open up. Oh, look. A different screen. Oh, that was weird. Hearing myself. Okay, so if I come out of there, if I go into Facebook. Um, okay, so if I click out of all of those. Pages, and I just go onto my Facebook page. I wonder if I can actually watch this live, or do I have to? It takes me to the YouTube channel. Oh, it does. It takes me to the YouTube channel, which is okay, but not everybody wants to be taken away. If that makes sense, not everybody wants to go to a different channel. Or a different, not box, um, window. Not everybody wants to perhaps go to a different place. But um, I was told that one of my most boring stories that I've ever told was talking about a house that I once lived in. So maybe I should do that. Maybe I should talk about that. I've closed the laptop. It's gone. I hope, because I've got a friend that's going to uh, send me a, uh, an iPad. Uh, it's a friend in America. So my plan, if I can, is to, when I do a live broadcast, I can stream to both YouTube and Facebook at the same time, which then means that it will be I don't know if it just it'll be I don't know why it just seems quite an interesting thing to do uh, for me anyway, but I have to look into it. I'm not sure microphone wise what I'll do because I'm not sure if I even need the microphone. 
And the microphone doesn't, it's not necessarily particularly loud when I haven't got a mic. So I've got a microphone there or there, went somewhere. But when I do it without a microphone and just, in fact, I should turn up the volume to see if that makes any difference. So it's, it's on the highest. but it's a bit more clearer when I do it like this with the microphone. So what story could I tell you? What could, uh, what? Andre's in his little bag today. Or to, there, this morning. It's a plastic bag. You can hear him. He's dreaming. I'm sure he's fine. It just sometimes when I hear him dreaming, and he's like, <coughs> like that, and I just oh, I just want to. Sometimes I do actually pick him up and give him a big cuddle, but then I wake him up and. doesn't always want to be woken up when he's asleep, you know? Yeah. Quite quiet in here. It's about Probably about three o'clock in the morning. There's very little going on. Which is just how I like it. It's just me, Andre in his little bag. There's what have I got in this room? So I've got a light over there in the corner, which is very similar. In fact, it's pretty much the exact identical light to the one that my nan used to have in her flat. <laughs> and um, it was quite funny, it was to me laugh, but would be sitting in there and sometimes my dad would be there as well and we'd all be chatting and it'd be maybe like late afternoon and perhaps it was getting a little bit dull outside not dark but a little bit and uh, the light would you know my nan would say oh Sometimes she wouldn't say anything. It was her, her flat, her light. And she'd turn this light on. And we'd all go, ah, because it was so bright. And I've got a light that's just like that, but it's, I don't think it's quite as bright as the one that she had. But it was so bright, I was like, ah. Oh. And then we'd have to beg her, please, turn it down a bit. Turn it down a little bit, just a bit, just a bit. And we'd all be sitting there, my nan would be there, and we'd all have her back to her because we couldn't look directly at her because of the light. It was like she was the Medusa, you know, from the, what's that film? Remember that thing with the snakes and you couldn't look at the Medusa because she turned to stone. We couldn't look at my nan because it was just too bright. We didn't turn to stone because that would be silly. So 
So, I got my light over there. I got my calendar on the wall. And it's ready for January. I know that we're not in January yet, um, but we're we're heading there. We've got one more day left of no. No, we haven't. We've got two more days. No. We've got one more day after today. So today is the thirtieth of December, two thousand and eighteen which means tomorrow will be the 31st of December, that'd be Monday, 2018. So that'll be New Year's Eve. And then Tuesday will be the 1st of January, 2018. And then Wednesday is the 2nd of January, 2018. And then I've got to wait a whole week before I get my next money. So it's, uh, so I got paid early before Christmas. So I've had to make it last and I imagine what's it, Sunday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, probably on Wednesday, so that'll be the second, so that'll be a normal day, won't it? Because Tuesday is the uh, New Year's Day, so Wednesday will be the end of the month, kind of where the money, a lot of the bills go out, and then I'll be able to see how much I've got left for sweets and chocolate and candy for the rest of the week and how many days are there in January 2019 you know I'm quite lucky because I can always remember how old I am by the year I'm in, because I was born in 1970. So in 1971, I was one after, you know, obviously my date of birth, my, the date of my birth. So I always know how old I am depending on the year and the month within the year. If it's before August, if it's 1971, if it's before August, I'll be zero, but then one uh, after August. So in 1972, I would have been one until August and then two. So I can always remember by them by the year. So 1973, uh, I'd be two, wouldn't I? And then three after August, because my birthday is at the end of August. 1974. So you see how it works is I have, I can remember, not that I kind of forget my age, but sometimes I do go ahead a bit and start saying, well, I'm, I'm like, now once we get into... 2019 in a couple of days or a day and a bit or two days really isn't it to 24 24 48 45 hours about 45 hours time roughly I'll start be think I start to think that I'm 49, because I'm thinking it's 2019, 49. But I'm not, not until the end of August. 
so, so 1974 would be three and then four after August. 1975, four. But I don't think in those days I was thinking ahead. So I don't think when I was five, let's say in 1976, I can't imagine if you'd have asked me in February, 1976, maybe it's a Tuesday, 14th or whatever, that if they said, how old am I? Unlikely I would have said, I'm seven, thinking, or I'm six, thinking ahead, you know, ahead to the month coming up, which was my birthday. But I seem to do that a bit more now than, I'm sure I never used to do it back then. And I'm not even sure if I knew what my age was at that time. Didn't really talk much about ages. I don't remember. It's a long, quite a long time ago. 1977. So I was six until the end of August. And then 19, yeah, and then at the end of August, 1977, I was seven. And then 1978, I was well, seven throughout. I suppose it's most of the year, isn't it, really? If you think January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. So that's eight months out of 12. So that's two thirds of the year where I was seven. And then the last one third of the year, September, October, November, and December, I would have been eight. So, and I remember that because my brother, my little brother, He's not little now, but he was, he was when he was born. Um, he had a big head though, he wasn't, he didn't have a small head when he was born. He still got, he was born with the same size head as what he's got now. And, uh, he was born the day before my birthday. So the day before my eighth birthday, he was born. And the thing, even though, well, I know when his birthday is because it's the day before my birthday. So it's quite a memorable day to remember. But quite often I forget the year. And because I remember my year and I remember the years of my two older brothers because it was two years between us. So two years between me and my older brother and then another two years between him and my oldest brother. So it was four years between me and my oldest brother, two years between me and my, young, my second oldest. Then there was eight years, give or take a few hours, between me and my youngest brother. I was trying to think, so that would mean there'd be 10 years between my youngest brother and my second oldest brother, or second from oldest brother, and 12 years between my youngest brother and my oldest brother. In fact, yeah, wow. I've never really worked that out before. So, the, yeah. So 1978 was quite memorable for that. That's one of those reasons is because uh, my little brother was born 
also I think that was the year that I made an igloo because it had been snowing not not in August but it had been snowing I think I think it snowed in the winter it, it was the winter it snowed but I think it snowed that winter and it was like a lot of snow I mean it came up to pretty much my waist but then I wasn't very tall I was always very small uh, not always I'm not small now I'm not particularly tall now but I'm five foot eight so I'm shorter than the average man but probably way more than the average man if that makes sense um, heavier than I should be for my height I think for my height I should be 11 and a half stone apparently so my weight I should be probably about 16 foot tall so yeah there you go so I had a few memories I suppose for 1978 I remember we were living in this little house and it was it was this it was a council house and it was newly built uh, before we moved in not while we were living there you know that would have been a bit strange uh, but you know, plumbers walking around fixing the bathroom, and I just need to go to the toilet. Yeah, but the electricians have turned the electricity off, so there's no light, so you can't see where you're doing your whiz. And, oh, oh, none of that. It was everything was functionable, and but there were other houses being built on the council estate where I was living. So it was a bit of a, I suppose a bit of a building site, but it was lovely in a, in a kind of a way. It was a nice area. It was a nice, yeah, it was, I liked that house. And then when we moved out, my nan and granddad moved in and took over the council house. And I think though those were the days when you could uh, probably be a bit more flexible with what you did and where you lived and I can't imagine that would be the case so much so I do I remember that house and I remember even visiting it it's probably the in a way it's probably the house that's had the most impact and the most fond memories of pretty much, you know, during my life, I'd say, because a lot of the times when I go around there, there'd be like family gatherings and most of the time it would be for something nice, you know, like a, a wedding or a birthday or an anniversary or, um, I don't know, you know, just general things like that, family gatherings, Christmas, of course, maybe, birthdays, Easter even, maybe, I don't recall ever going there for Easter, but I might have done, but then I don't recall everything that's ever happened, something might have happened that I don't recall, and that was 1978. 1979, let me think. So I was, I was eight during that time, until August. Uh, so then I turned nine. What was I doing in 1978? I'm just trying to think. I I think by that time 
No, it's like 1979, rather. I think by 1979, that's the year that I moved out of the house and moved into another house. I can't remember what time of the year it was or anything like that. But my little brother was still pretty much a baby. And um, we, yeah, I went, I just, yeah, I left the school that I was in to go to a new school that was closer to the new house. We, and I don't think it was in any way closer to where I lived than the school that I was already going to. It was a long, long walk. And I've never, never really been a quick walker. It's, uh, I don't really see the point in, I suppose when I was nine, I didn't really know much about cardiovascular, uh, exercise and things like that, but never really wanted to be bothered with walking quickly. For me, if you're going to travel quickly standing up, then I got myself a skateboard or stood on a bus uh, or sat in a lift or stood in a lift. Mind you, a lift or an elevator that would be going up and down, and or an escalator. Are escalators called escalators even in different parts of the world? Because I know that lifts in England are called elevators in America. Aluminium in England is called aluminium in America. Root is called route, although some people in England have started using uh, other words like, for example, Jay-Z. Jay-Z in England is J-Z. We don't use Z, we use Z. So the alphabets are A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, or H, depending on, you know, how uh, you pronounce it. I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, V, R, S. T U V W X Y Z not Z. There's no Z at the end, it's Z in, in my country. And I can't believe that I read the alphabet out wrongly. Let's see if I can do it again. You know some people were uh, as part of a test to see if someone's over the limit drinking, they get asked if they can to read the alphabet out backwards. I clearly can't even do it forwards. A, B, C, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. That's, that's worth a like and a subscribe, if nothing else. The fact that I managed to do the whole alphabet at 48 years old, I feel very, very humbled to, to have you witness this. Always the word embarrassed, one of them. <laughs> so 1979,
started a new school and with that new school I unlike the other school because a junior school it was for like pre high school level with the new school I had I had to wear a shirt a tie and a jumper I had to wear a tie and yeah this is never really been a big fan of ties always found them a little bit constrictive not yeah not really yeah not, not a tie a tie fella not a big fan of ties when I say that out of context it sounds wrong I'm talking about the ties that people put around their necks and make into a, a knot or a bow or whatever that's what I mean by that and I just I'm not sure if I liked it or not because I can't remember all the emotions I've ever experienced throughout my life including that particular period of my life in 1979 when I was nine or eight and then nine after August and then Nineteen eighty. Let's have a look. Nineteen eighty. I was still at junior school, and so I was nine all the way through nineteen eighty until the end of August, where I turned ten. So you see what I mean when I say I can remember what you, how old I am by the year that I'm in. You see, 2018, I'm 48. But next year, I'll still be 48 all the way down until like in January 2019, I'll be 48. Uh, February 2019, I'll still be 48. In March 2019, I'll still be 48. In April 2019, I'll still be 48. In May 2019, I'll still be 48. So in June 2019, I'll still be 48. July 2019, I will still be 48. And most of August, in fact, most of August of 2019, I'll still be 48. But come the end of August, I'll turn 49. I mean, in a way, it would be easier if I turned 49 on the first day of the month of the year. It doesn't make me eight months older, but um it'd be just a bit easier to remember so then i'll be yes but 1980 i remember turning 10 at the end of august i don't remember what i got for my birthday but i do remember what i got for my birthday on my eighth birthday in 19 78 because my little brother was being born in the hospital 
the day before. And those were the days when um, people would give birth and they would still stay in the hospital for a couple of days to recover, you know. Um, it's not, nowadays it's like uh, having an ingrown toenail removed. It's, you're in and you're out and it's done. And, but back then it was, you know, it was a hospital stay. So my little brother was in there for two or three days, I think. And I'm not comparing giving birth to having an ingrown toenail removed. I'm talking about the amount of time that someone might be, you know, in the particular medical facility sleeping in that bed. My sister gave birth and she, yeah, she was out the same day. She didn't stay overnight. I imagine at some point she lay down. So, that birthday, part of the reason I remember it, wasn't just because my little brother was born. It was because my nan came down to look after us while my little brother was being born. So she stayed with us. And for my birthday, I got a set of golf clubs, like a little putting set, but they were heavy, proper metal, um, rubber handles, proper really sturdy stuff. And these holes were basically plastic holes with a, a little uh, slope so you could put the balls in and I had a little yellow uh, thing that I'd put into the ground to put the balls on it was it was a beautiful thing and although we didn't have a big garden it was definitely big enough for a bit of uh, putting and uh, I just remember that I remember playing with those golf clubs and just really good memories. I had those for years. I can't remember what happened to them, but I had them for a long time. I can't remember what else, what other presents I got for my birthday that year, but that was a really good present, I liked it didn't want it. I mean, I didn't, um, I should rephrase that. I didn't, it's not something that I asked uh, Santa birthday for. It was just the, it was just, it was a, it was a present that I got and I really liked when I got it. I've never had any interest in playing, uh, not snooker, not cricket, golf, that's it, golf. Never, never been that bothered about playing golf. Though I imagine that would be a really good thing to watch if you want to fall asleep. Because it's very relaxing. I find A couple of sports I quite like to, I don't really like watching them, I'm not that interested, but I find really, really relaxing. One of them is snooker, and I'm not sure if it's, I think it's because it's such a controlled environment where everybody behaves themselves and it's they're very quiet and the person speaking you know, the commentator talks very quietly and everything's calm. And even the when the ball's um, 
touch each other. Uh, they don't make any kind of just little clatter, little little clatter, not anything major. It's, uh, it's like a perfectly sounded, like a perfectly sounded orchestra. Everything kind of goes together perfectly in order to facilitate a sense of calm relaxation. So I do, I'm a, I'm a fan of snooker from that, that point. I quite like sometimes maybe sitting there and closing my eyes and listening to the snooker and hearing the little clitter and clatter of the, of the balls banging together. And you can hear the, the crowd and they might, they might clap, but even the clapping is done gently, like a, a quiet clap. But you can hear it's, you, you, you're aware that it's the clap, and, but it's just not, it's not loud, it's just, the clap's just there for everyone to, to notice. So the clap is very noticeable, but it's not, it's like the level isn't any higher than uh, the touching of the balls or, you know, the, you know, when they're putting the chalk on and when they're rubbing the end of the cue and putting the chalk on, you can gently hear it, but it's very calm and relaxing. It's like everything. And... I haven't watched huge amounts of snooker, but I don't remember ever once watching snooker and maybe having my eyes closed and just listening to it gently. I don't remember ever hearing one of the snooker players walk around with squeaky shoes. I don't think it's, it might have happened in the past. I haven't watched every single piece of snooker that's ever been played throughout history. So I can't say that with a conviction of uh, self-belief. What I can say is I find snooker very relaxing to watch or to listen to. I used to have a snooker table in my, well, when I was a kid, when I was young. What year would this be? Probably, I would say, because 1981, I was, I was 10 until the end of August when I was 11. And then in September, I went to high school. So I reckon about 1981, we got a snooker table in our playroom. So me and my three brothers, we used to have this playroom at the top of the, top of the uh, house. And this snooker table took up a lot of room. And, but on top of the snooker table, we also had this table tennis table that we could put on top. So I fitted right on the top of the snooker table. And unfortunately, I had very competitive older brothers. Not only were they older, but they were very competitive and they just didn't really let me win or kind of give me a chance. So when it came to snooker, when it came to table tennis or pool, because we used to play pool on the snooker table as well, they just used to just beat me every time, which was, I don't know, I kind of, my little brother, I looked forward to him getting older so I could do the same to him. But he was just too young. And you think, 19, 
81. If he was born in 1978, that makes him about three. Yeah, so when I'm, when I'm 11, he's three because he's born the day before me. Not the same year, otherwise be, be twins. And uh, I think as the years went by, probably maybe 84, he was old enough, so when he got to about five, he used to stand on a stool or a chair and he would play snooker. And I was looking forward to that because I thought, yeah, great, I can now do to him what my older brothers did to me. But it turned out that he was better than me. So that plan didn't really work out. I'm trying to think what else. We used to have this, uh, is it a six track or 12 track? They're really old tapes that my dad had this recorder, player thing. And there was loads of tapes from the 50s and the 60s and the 70s. And we used to, we used to play them and I, I got to really like some of the, the 50s songs and the 60s. And one of my favourite songs was The Wanderer. Um, but I used to like this song called Rubber Ball. And the lyrics were something like, um, Rubber Ball, it comes bouncing back to me. Rubber Ball, like a rubber ball. Ball, 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 ball. Like a rubber ball comes bouncing back to me he 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 something like that it's very it reminds me a little bit of buddy holly his singing style was very much he had to extend a word for a little bit longer than it would normally be. So I'm trying to think of an example. Um, what's a Buddy Holly sing? Oh boy. Uh, I'm trying to think of the words to one of his songs. Um, okay, well it's, the sun is out, the sky is blue, there's not a cloud to spoil the view. Because it's raining, raining in my heart. The weatherman says clear today. He doesn't know you've gone away. And it's raining, raining in my heart. Oh, misery. Misery, e e e. What's going to become of me, e e e e? I tell my blues they mustn't show, but soon these tears they start to flow. And it's raining, raining in my heart. That wasn't really a good example because there wasn't too many E E E's. Let's think of another one. Um, okay, I'm going to tell you how it's going to be. You're going to give your love to me.
Your love for me, it's got to be real. Blah, 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 show it just how I feel. No, I can't remember the rest of the words of that one. What other ones? Um, every day, things are getting faster. Going faster than a roller coaster. Love like yours will surely come my way. A hey, a hey, hey. Yeah, that's a fairly good example. I don't want to go through the whole song. But I used to write songs myself. I used to. Uh, wrote this song called Mandy. You might have heard it before if you ever heard any of my stuff. And it was, it's a, a girl I met when I was probably in about 1982, maybe 1981, so I could have been, I could have been 10, I could have been 11, I could have been 12, you know, depending on what year it was and how old I was. So I met this girl, her name was Mandy, and it was on a caravan site. It was a it was like a caravan park where we could just people could stop for a day or two and just rest from their travels, you know. Um or stay for the week I suppose. I don't I don't know. I can't remember. So we were in a caravan and a tent and we stayed there for I think two days. So I met this girl called Mandy and I really liked her and I think she really liked me as well. And when I was younger, I was quite romantic. Um, I was quite, I was very, I was quite, um, I would say, Yeah, I was romantic. That's probably the best way to explain it. And she she went and she waved goodbye to me out of the back of the caravan, or it might have been in the back of the might have been the back of the car. But then if she had a caravan behind her, how would I be able to see her waving unless the car and the caravan went by side not sideways, but I was these cars don't travel sideways today, but it went past in a way that I could see her in the back of the car, which means she must have been on the left hand side, unless they were going the other way, where she could have been on the right hand side of the back of the car. And potentially, I suppose she might have even been in the passenger seat, but I don't recall that. Or she might have been sitting in the middle at the back. There might have been three people in the back of the car. I really can't, don't have those particular um, bits of information. So I wrote this song about her. It's called Mandy. And I'll always remember it. I'll always, the, the lyrics. I won't sing it, but I'll give you the lyrics. Um, because I think the, the singing in it would be so, so incredible that, it, you know, I don't want it to disrupt sleep and stuff. So I don't want it, if you've fallen asleep and dozed off during this long, boring, sleepy session where, you know, sometimes just hearing my voice is enough. And you just like, uh, you just fall asleep. And, uh, but this song called Mandy, it's, uh, right, here we go. This is off the top of my head. Mandy, baby, listen to me. Mandy, baby. I want you to see. 
Mandy dear, I want you to hear, I don't want a single tear. I love you Mandy, Mandy I do. I want to know if you love me too. Just say something. I want to know. Just say something like hello. Oh Mandy, I love you. And I think on that that note of romance and deep philosophical searching and discovery. We can bring this to an end, bring this recording to an end. And we can say goodbye. And I'll find a way how to turn this thing off. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for listening. And I will see you next time. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you enjoy what I do and you want to see more. Please like the video if you like what I do. Please share my videos with people you want to annoy, <laughs> or your friends. My website is jasonnewland.com and enjoy the rest of your day or evening or when you wake up feeling wonderful. Bye.